The answer is none of them. Get an AR-15. The AR-15 is cheaper. It's more ambi friendly. It's simpler. It's usually got a much better trigger than any bullpup. And it's pretty much the standard rifle in the US, but the bullpup idea. It's a bit of a big titty goth concept. It's intriguing. It's kind of sexy in a weird way. And dare I say, superior to God and Eugene Stoner's magnum opus. Because the chambers behind the trigger guard, that means a bullpup with a 20 inch barrel will be about the same overall length as a Mark 18 style M4 with a mere 10 inch barrel. This means a 20 inch AUG will handle like a dedicated CQB weapon, but will deliver optimum performance with the 20 inch barrel that 223 was designed specifically for. You're also going to get less drop and flatter trajectory. More importantly, 223 derives effectiveness from fragmentation, speed, causing the bullet to break apart inside the target. While a Mark 18 will deliver a 223 round at the 2,500 feet per second or more required to reliably fragment, only inside of about 75 or 50 yards, a 55 grain 223 M193 bullet fired from a 20 inch gun will still be trucking at over that 2,500 feet per second threshold between 200 and 250 yards, meaning you're getting about four times the effective range as a Mark 18 from a package the same size or smaller than the Mark 18. AR-15s can also get a little missionary position these days, kind of boring. Everyone at the range will cheer when you bring an angry pirate of an AUG out of a Crown Royal bag. Not only are they a lot of fun, but they're practical and effective combat tools. So much so that on this list today, we're only considering military issue bullpups in 5.56 that are readily available in the US. The Austrian Steyr AUG, the Croatian HS product VHS2, known as the Springfield Hellion in the US, and the Israeli IMI or IWI X95 Tavor. Which one should you get? They're all somewhat similar. The price is all about the same for all of them. I've seen them for 1600 bucks or less, each one of them. Which one to choose? That's more complicated than federal income tax, but slightly easier to figure out than where your wife wants to go to dinner. Let's start with the AUG. Oh my God. I love this damn gun. The Steyr AUG was adopted in 1977, was decades ahead of its time. It's still relevant today and a known proven commodity. In the 80s, the Australian Army wanted to replace the FAL with a 5.56 carbine. They conducted trials in 1985 between the Steyr AUG and the Colt M16A2. The AUG destroyed the M16. I already made a very popular video about this trial a few years ago where I discussed the results in detail, but more or less, the M16 had more stoppages, more parts broken more often, barrels didn't last as long, it was less accurate, more difficult to maintain, and the AUG short stroke piston system with dual guide rods was found to withstand adverse conditions much better than my beloved M16's direct impingement gas system. So in 1988, Australia adopts the Steyr AUG as the F88. But it's got other neat features too. You want to change the barrel on an AR? Do you have a barrel and a gunsmith available? Do you want to change the barrel on your AUG? Do you have a barrel and four seconds available? And I guess an opposable thumb probably helps. Note that 300 blackout AUGs are already starting to show up in the wild, meaning that we may be getting them soon in the US. Go. Not to mention, we're seeing 24 inch heavy barrels for the AUG as well. I think Steyr's importing 20 inch barrels, 18, 14 and a half, 16 inch barrels. That's a huge advantage of the AUG compared to the other guns on this list. If you want to swap 300 blackout or a 16 inch to an 18 inch to a 20 inch to a 14 and a half inch to a 24 inch, you can do it all in seconds. Got a double feed in your AR-15? Dead. Double feed in the AUG? Do this. So then the bolt slams into this and gets these stuck. But then what we're gonna do is since they're trying to occupy the chamber on the AUG, we're gonna remove the chamber from the gun and that's gonna free up that space. So as the, mag is, as the chamber comes back, it's able to, the bullets may shift where they are at and then that knocks them off the feed ramps. The AUG's also really, really small and reasonably light, just 27 inches overall length with a 16 inch barrel, 7.3 pounds. While this is about a pound heavier than one of my favorite ARs, the Daniel Defense V7, all of the weight is concentrated towards the back of the gun, giving it better balance. 
one-handed shots with the AUG are possible. Boom! First time! God, I hope you got that on camera. <laughs> Second oh, time, shit. nailed it. That's three for three, Dude, baby. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Put this thing away. <laughs> Accuracy is wonderful. I've shot one and a half inch groups and tighter for my personal AUG for years now. It uses a cold hammer forged barrel that makes it tougher than a $2 steak. Helping with the accuracy is the $99 Ratworks Sear that makes the trigger absolutely wonderful. And that's usually the weak point in a pup. You've also got the ability to choose between the OG AUG Waffle Mags or NATO Stainag Mags, that is AR-15 Mags. And because the lower receiver isn't the registered part, you can buy one AR-15 mag compatible lower receiver in mud, like I did, and an AUG mag compatible version in OD green, like your boy Carl did. The downsides of the AUG. This is the oldest gun here. It's the least modular. The A3 version that we can get in the US has a neat little light mounting slot, plus the foregrip, plus enough rail to mount an optic, or you can just mount the newly imported Austrian AUG SF optic 3x scope directly into the receiver and piggyback a red dot on top of it. Basically, the AUG gives you everything you need, nothing you don't, but people who want more mounting options, more pick rail, whatever, you do need to buy third-party accessories or get one of the other guns on this list. Also, filthy lefties have been forsaken not only by God, but also by Steyr. There's a left-hand version of this gun, but it's only available in the AUG mag version, and it's not as easy a swap as some of the other guns on this list. So let's get to that. The next gun, the Croatian HS Product VHS2, sold as the Springfield Hellion in the U.S. Hate the name, love the gun, don't know why Springfield insists. I'm pulling names that sound like Trucker CB handles for its guns. The Hellion, the Hellcat, the Prodigy, and their next gun, the Ziggy Yard Dog. Probably. But anyways, the VHS rifle was developed over 16 years before being released in 2008, so tons of research and time went into this gun. It's a 5.56 bullpup that accepts AR mags. It's a highly respected, battle-proven rifle. 100,000 of these guns have seen combat in the Middle East, including Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan as well. You can get a 16-inch version, an 18-inch version, and a 20-inch version, all using Cold Hammer Forge 1 and 7 inch twist barrels at 28 inches long, about the same length as the AUG. Unlike the AUG, however, the VHS has an adjustable 5 position spring loaded stock if you need a little extra length of pull or life hack here. A lot of people complain about the excessive length of pull on the Hellion. I've spoken personally with the Croatians at HS Product about this issue. It's a feature, not a bug. Extending the stock all the way out moves the ejection port away from your face in case you have to shoot it left-handed. The VHS uses a short stroke piston operating system similar to the AUG. This makes the VHS clean shooting reliable. We torture tested the shit out of this bullpup when we first got it. We had zero failures. Plus, it's excellent for suppression with a two position adjustable gas block with an S suppressed setting and an N normal setting. It's the only gun that has a suppressed setting out of the box. The AUG's got gas plugs with suppressor settings that you can buy, but as far as I know, it's not a factory out of the box option. It's not an option at all with the Tavor we're about to talk about. So right out of the box, the Hellion might be the best gun for suppression. Piston operated guns usually have sus accuracy because there's a piston pumping on top of them, but holy shit, the VHS is one of the most accurate combat rifles I've ever tested in a decade of working for the Firearm Blog. With a 1-8x Night Force LPVO from a bag, we were getting 1.5-inch groups all day at 100 yards with regular duty-grade M193 ammo. Not only is it accurate, but it is built. According to the Small Arms Defense Journal, the Croatian Ministry of Defense claims to have run 50,000 rounds through a test copy of the VHS, without any parts breakages whatsoever. The VHS has ambi controls and an easily reversible case ejection system similar to the FAMAS. It's also got this H&K G36 railed carry handle, which gives it kind of a high offset, but it's got the G36 swinging ambi charging handle stowed under the rail. The Hellion will accept AR-15 mags and grips, like the Bravo Company Mod 3 grip it comes with, which is a great match for it. It's more modular than the AUG, featuring a polymer handguard with nine M-lock slots for mounting accessories, three, six, and nine o'clock position. 
As far as the negatives of the VHS, it's the biggest bullpup on this list. A little chunky at eight pounds, a little longer, and almost a pound heavier than the AUG. I also don't like the Ergos nearly as much as the top-notch Ergos on the Tavor. The safety on the VHS moves in a weird direction, and it's kind of stiff. The bolt release is kind of weird, a little bit like pinching a nipple. You also don't have near the accessory choices that the Tavor and the Yogg do, but those guns have been in the U.S. much, much longer than the Hellion. So if the VHS takes off, that will likely change. After all, they did just launch the 18 and 20 inch models in the past few weeks. The Tavor X95, one hell of a pup too. The Tavor is between the AUG and VHS in age. It showed up in the mid 90s. The Tavor was brought about as a replacement for the Galil. The Galil was reliable, but it's a heavy steel gun, not very modular. The Israelis started issuing the M4, but they sought a gun that would give AK-47 reliability, M4 modularity, MP5 handling, and in 1995, the Tavor was born. During IDF field testing, including combat, the Tavor was more reliable and more accurate than the issued M4s in Israeli terrain, and it was adopted as the official rifle of the IDF in 2003. So now we're gonna try to shoot with the M21, which is a no magnification optic at 300 yards, shooting a five foot, eight inch tall man. And we're going to see how well the micro Tavor shoots at that distance. Perfect hit, slightly left. Same spot. Exact same spot, about five inches high. Slightly right at Four. the belt line. In the kneecap, right side. All right, all right. Right in the dick. Was that all hits? Yeah, they oh, were shit. The original Tavor was known as the TAR-21, but the X95 version was introduced 15 years later as an update. This is my Micro Tavor X95. Look at it. It is one ugly, sexy piece of ace. As you can see, I beat the shit out of this gun at Thunder Ranch, and I just love it. Mine's the Micro Tavor SBR, which is a 13-inch barrel rifle and a 21-inch overall length package. This thing's six inches shorter than an MP5, but with at least double the effective range. The 16 and a half inch version of this gun's 26 inches long, making it the smallest rifle in this video, even with a longer barrel. And like these other bull pups, the Tavor also uses a durable cold hammer forged barrel. The X95 has great ergonomics and handling for a bull pup. Bull pups have famously shitty triggers, but the Tavor's is not that bad out of the box, and Geisley actually makes an upgraded trigger for it. It's probably got the best controls of all the guns here because the X95 places the Ambi mag release right where it is on an AR, and the bolt release is right behind the magazine well, making mag swaps faster than a knife fight in a phone booth, and about as quick as the AR-15. Oh yeah, it also accepts AR magazines too, just like the other guns on this list. It's got an ambi safety, ambi mag release, ambi bolt release, and a swappable ejection port, so this gun would actually work pretty well for lefties also. The Tavor is more modular than the AUG and up there with the Hellion in that the Tavor has a full length optic rail up top and a railed pick rail forend at the three, six, and nine o'clock positions with nice covers for it right out of the box. As far as the negatives go for this spectacular weapon, IWI uses a weird muzzle device mounting option from the factory that requires you to counter twist two wrenches with a lot of force to get it loose, but after that, it's too easy to mount a can or a muzzle device. It doesn't have an adjustable gas block, but firing mine suppressed was just fine at Thunder Ranch. even though it will blow gas out of the left-hand side ejection port cover unless you buy the upgraded Manicore gasketed ejection port cover. You might end up with a little bit of carbon on your face. This is exactly what happened to me when I was shooting this at Thunder Ranch. Of course, I'm like this for almost an hour. Ryan doesn't say a word to me about it while I'm walking around Thunder Ranch looking like I just blew an 86 Bonneville muffler to completion. Yeah, that sounds good. Woof. <laughs> uh, it's a little toasty. It's a little toasty. Felt it through these gloves. Jamie, you got something. Why, why would you not fucking tell me that? <laughs> why would you not fucking tell? Why would you just let me fucking talk to the camera? God, I would have fucking. The AUG with a gas plug upgrade or the stock Hellion are probably better suppressor hosts. 
than the X95. The charging handle also doesn't swing out of the way like it does in the Hellion, so I bought a folding charging handle for Manticore as well, and it's wonderful. The AUG and the VHS are short-stroke gas piston-operated systems, while the Tavor borrows the long-stroke gas operating system from the AK. This is a robust but a little bit heavy design, so a 16-inch Tavor is kind of flabby at 7.9 pounds, a tenth of a pound lighter than the Hellion, but 0.6 pounds heavier than the slim and trim Fighting AUG. The 13-inch model is 7.5 pounds, which is still heavier than the 7.3 pound AUG. So which one do you get? You tell me. I mean, they're all about the same price. They're all high quality. They all have AR-15 magazine variants. All have cold hammer forged barrels. They're all battle proven, reliable piston operated designs that are all pretty damn accurate. The devil is in the details. The AUG has the longest track record, quick swap barrels, tons of parts and accessories, and it's an iconic diehard classic. It's the lightest of the bunch. 300 blackout swaps will be easy if the barrels ever get here. The Hellion is the heaviest and the youngest of these designs, but it's hardly new with plenty of combat experience and allegedly a 50,000 round plus service life, according to the Croatian Ministry of Defense. It's very modular, it's truly ambi, it's accurate, and it's got an extendable stock feature that'll allow you to swap to support side shooting without getting brass bukkake. Plus, it's the only gun here with a suppressor setting on the gas block right out of the box. The X95 has the best ergos of all these guns. The 13-inch micro SBR version that I have is nearly the perfect rifle. It's the shortest overall length gun, also truly ambi with plenty of aftermarket support, and you can swap left to right hand side pretty easy. Full modularity with a flat top optic rail and a railed handguard out of the box. It doesn't have gas adjustments like the VHS or the AUG. Suppressing it is a little bit of a pain in the ass, but it's still a phenomenal rifle. So, I guess this video wasn't helpful at all, was it? I own all three of these guns. I think you should too. The AUG is my spiritual favorite, something that fills the hole in my heart left by my lack of friends or people who care about me. The Tavor X95, the 13-inch version, resplendent. It makes me feel like a G. It's great looking. My God, it handles like a Kawasaki in the SBR version. The Hellion, the new guy in the U.S. that doesn't have the same third-party support as the other guns, but it doesn't effing need it. This is the only gun of these three that I would say needs nothing out of the box. The choice of which bullpup to get is yours, you lucky bullpup and son of a bitch. Guys, thanks as usual for watching. Thank you to our sponsors, Ventura Munitions, best ammo store on the internet, bar none, Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. Would you like to win one of six $250 gift certificates that we give away every single month to Top Gun Supply? Support us on Subscribestar or Player at the $4.99 level or higher, and you are automatically entered to win. Guys, thanks as usual for watching. Take care.